Our second guest of the day in studio is Spencer Hadley joining BYU Sports. Hey, Spence, welcome to Studio B. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me in, guys. Do you have a stain on your shirt? No stains on my shirt. Good I don't for think you, so. Man. I had a fiance though, so she she helped. I me have out, a wife. Know? Maybe I need to have Uh-oh. her check me, check my clothes. <laughs> no. Shoot, that's good. She doesn't scan you at the door before no. you leave. She's oh. not awake when I Let leave. Let me see your sleeve, Jerem. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Like security for me to get through. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good All idea. right. Let's start with this question about the game, Spencer. Are you more frustrated or optimistic right now about BYU football? So I have to choose one. Is what you're saying? Ah, uh, no. I frustrated, obviously, because. It was so close. They played well. I thought they played well. Um, also frustrated, I feel like we didn't finish well. I feel like we played well through three quarters, and then the fourth quarter we really we let go of a lot of things we did well throughout the game and cost us the game. However, optimistic as well because we did play well against a great opponent. UCLA is no joke, in my opinion. I, I think that they're a great team, and we showed more flashes of brilliance throughout the game with a few moments of discouragement where it was really frustrating. So obviously frustrating to get the loss, to take the loss, um, but optimistic moving forward. I feel like we have a great team. I feel like um, we learned some things about ourselves and I feel like our coaching staff will take care of those things and really help us move forward. Put on your analyst hat and let's talk about where, where you'd move forward with BYU. What did you see that you think BYU is going to work on this week uh, in preparation for Michigan? Well, I personally hope they work on tackling. Um, it, that's not just in this game. In the last couple games, uh, we've seen that as as a, a dent. In what the do the armor, Cougars need to do better? How do you how do you tell someone or teach someone to tackle better? That's tough. And and as playing, I know uh, Coach Mendenhall's philosophy is kind of you either know how to tackle or you don't. And uh, so we didn't really work on a whole lot of tackling. However, my personal opinion, I disagree with that. I feel like you can learn technique. I feel like you can learn to track the hip, you know, lead with the right shoulder, extend through the, the play, you know, wrap your arms. I think wrapping up was, a, was an issue. Um, one of the things I really think our defense needs to work on, we're, we're really great at big plays. You know, we've had a lot of interceptions. And you see guys at the point of the attack going for the ball trying to get the ball out. And that's that's good. You want that from your defense. That's aggressive. Trying to rip the ball out, slapping at it, punching it. But the first guy to the play should be the wrap-up guy. The second guy needs to be coming in and ripping the ball. We see a lot of times where the first guy is coming in, trying to make the tackle while also punching out the ball, clubbing the ball or trying to punch it. And that, that makes you weaker as a tackler. It's easier for the running backs to break those kinds of tackles. And so I think – one of the things that we need to do as a defense is teach first guy to the ball, wrap up, hold on, let your buddies come in, and and let them rip the ball out, gang tackling, and, and work at it that way. Spencer Hadley with us in Studio B. As we look back at BYU-UCLA on Saturday night, I want to ask you, what what is the strongest part of the BYU defense right now? That's a painful question because I'm a front seven guy. And I'm, I'm all about the front seven. And traditionally, we've had a strong front seven. And when you look at our front seven, we have, we're littered with talent. We have, you know, Bronson Kafusi. I think our linebackers are fast, explosive. I think that we, we are very capable, extremely capable in our front seven. However, I, I believe our secondary Whoa. has. Whoa. Okay. I, I, I personally believe our secondary has outplayed our front seven in these first three games. How so? Consistently. You see our front seven, they're great, and they play well. Now, granted, you have to put the little asterisk in there because we're missing the, the most important, our key opponent of our front seven, you know, our, our nose guard. Travis, to Travis it. being uh, gone. Is it of the defense as a whole? I, is I, he the most yeah. important part? In, in a 3-4 defense, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what's made our defense, especially our run defense, so strong the last several years is we've had – Great players, Fuga, Manu Maliuna, exactly, Tuiloma. exactly. Great players in that in that nose guard position, and it's difficult when you lose your first guy in the first game because your second guy, you've been getting reps in camp, but not the same amount and not the same quality of reps. And so to ask a guy to come in and and fill in right, it it shows. You you see it, and and we've seen especially when the game gets late, offenses will you see that they'll gash us, they'll big chunks of yardage or, you know, the consistent, they'll ground it on us and, and it wears on us. 
And it's, it's frustrating as a front seven guy to see that and to have to say that. But I think consistent play, the secondary is, is stronger this year than our, our front seven. And rush defense certainly a concern right now. The pass defense, I think, has been pretty good, which brings us to the stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. BYU is tied for first in the nation as a team with seven Kainakua leads the nation with four as an individual. So he's he's doing that? a lot in the secondary. In two games, Jeremy. In two games, two games. he didn't play two against games. Nebraska. Two, yeah, two games. I we're littered with talent across our defense and and big play capability. And you saw that with our linebackers too. Harvey had two picks right in this last game, and and you think, you know, you see big play ability. We have athletes. They're great players. And uh, it's exciting to watch. I think our consistency needs to, which is interesting because that's Broncos bread and butter. You know, consistent, fill your gap, know your defense, know your assignment, make the play as a team. And, and it's frustrating because we don't, we don't see that as much this year as in years past. So, Which BYU player impressed you the most individually on Saturday night? Are you ready for this one? Trevor Sampson. Trevor Sampson. Three for three with the 45 long. I think he's Mr. Consistency. Yeah, you got to love that. You need that. And, you know, he gave us a chance to win the game because of those. And huge. And, and to me, other than him, you know, you saw flashes of brilliance and, and, and then not so much. The guys would, would be there, make big plays, and then disappear. And then, but throughout the game, player of the game goes to Trevor Sampson for me. How about Adam Hine? Okay, so here, here's a guy who physically – Maybe maybe the best built offensive player we've got. You know, just he's crazy. Yeah. Right? Right. And then all of a sudden he's the running back. Algernon Brown hurts his knee, misses the game. This guy became this guy turned into a number one running back. Um something happened in, in the fourth quarter against Boise State and then here. What are mm -hmm. you seeing? You know, in playing against I, I know Adam I played against him and had to try and tackle him as he ran, <laughs> as he ran for the scout he team never jumped for, over for you. a couple of years. No, it never jumped over me, but, uh, you know, I've got some, some tweaks in the neck and shoulders that it's probably a tribute to him. <laughs> uh, physical specimen. And, and, you know, he's fast and he's powerful. He's not an easy guy to take down, and that's what you need from a running back. You need a guy that will not be tackled by one guy, occasionally tackled by two, but it almost always takes three or four guys to get him down. And he's strong. He sees the holes well. Um, he lets plays develop. And then he he's not crazy breakaway speed, but he's got enough speed that he gets pretty good chunks of yardage. And, and I think he played really well in this last game, and in, especially in the Boise State game in the fourth quarter, as you mentioned. Something happened to him where he either maybe has taken on the number one role or he's getting more reps and coaching. I don't, I don't know, but 149 against UCLA? No one saw this coming, that he would, one, be the number one, and have 149. BYU had a run game. That was a concern. BYU now flipping the page to Michigan, and from what we've seen, the line has floated right around BYU being a five-point underdog. The Cougars have been an underdog in every single game they have played this year. They were a seven-point dog in Nebraska, won. Three-point dog to Boise State, won that game. Almost upset UCLA at 16-and-a-half. Now at five. What do you anticipate on Saturday, Spencer, as you watch BYU go play Michigan? You know, what I anticipate is that not one of the guys in the locker room will even know that, that they're an underdog, that they're a point underdog. We don't I, – I never knew what we were in, in a game, and, and I don't, that's not something we really stress or focus on. I don't think these guys have that mentality. Um, if they know it, it's going to make them angry. It's going to piss them off. They're going to go into the game and play real well. I don't think that uh, – personally, I don't think we are an underdog. I expect BYU to come in and win that game. I thought um, – I think we learned a lot about ourselves in this UCLA game that we, we're, we're a top-tier team and we're going to contend. And, you know, it doesn't matter who we're playing, but we're going to go out there and we're going to play them tough. We're going to play them hard. And I, I, expect, I expect a big game. I think BYU is going to go in and take care of business. I feel the same way. I think that BYU is in a very confident place that, yes, BYU lost and, yes, BYU is frustrated, but they're very optimistic because Tanner Mangum has shown, okay, I can lead this team. Yeah. Boise State, Hail Mary, there was no fluke here, right? Right. Put him in position to win the game. Uh, there's a run game with Adam Hine. The receivers are fantastic. Now you just look at that defense and you go, okay, let's just tackle a little bit better. And we've got a good shot to win at Michigan. I'm, I think BYU feels really good and is going to have a great week of practice. I think they should. I think they should. And if they don't, then they're mistaken. Because you did – you you talk about the Hail Mary of Boise State and Nebraska. And, and I don't think that, you know, a lot of – 
people I've talked to, I don't think those were bad balls. I think, I think he threw those balls very well, put him in a great position for his, his guys to go make a play. And that's as a quarterback, that's what you got to do. you got to trust your guy on the end of that throw to go up and get it. And I think he's done that very well. I think something else that we saw in this UCLA game that we didn't see quite as much before is you saw several long, methodical, sustained drives down the field that I think should give Tanner a ton of confidence going into this next game and, and the BYU offense that, hey, you know, yeah, we have big play capability, but we also have the ability to march the ball down the field. We have a run game. We've got a quarterback that is, is settling in. He's comfortable. He can, he can pick the defense apart. We can take what they give us, and we can march the ball down the field, and we can – we have an offense. We have a great offense, and, and I think that that should be very encouraging for the Cougars going into this next week's matchup. The unpredictability of college football is what makes it unprecedented and 100% fantastic. The Cougars, without Taysom Hill, without Jamal Williams, without Travis Tuilema, ranked after week three. Again, none of you said that. But we all love it. Spencer, great to have you in Studio B. By the way, I think you're rivaling Brian Logan for best beard right oh, now of the it. former BYU and athletes. And Brian shaved, Thanks. so you win right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that title. <laughs> Spence, great to have you, man. Thanks. Thanks for having me.